Japan is a nation of islands strung out along the western edge of the northern Pacific Ocean, spanning latitudes equivalent to Nova Scotia in the north to Key West in the south. In the northern reaches, winters are cold and summers cool, while the southernmost islands, known collectively as the Nansei Shoto or Nansei Islands, are decidedly subtropical. The journey I'm taking will bring me from my home in Fukuoka on Kyushu, Japan's southernmost main island, to Amamiyoshima about 250 kilometers or 130 miles north of the well-known island of Okinawa. Amamiyoshima and four nearby islands, Kakeromajima, Yoroshima, Ukejima, and Idakekujima, comprise an area roughly equal to Cape Cod or just slightly larger than New York City's five boroughs. Unlike those places, it never gets truly cold here, with temperatures below 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit being rare. Completely frost-free, and home to extensive hardwood forests and low mountainous terrain. I am here in early winter, a time of cool, cloudy, and often rainy weather. While these islands are most famous for their gorgeous sea coasts, boasting shallow water coral reefs and many miles of unspoiled and undeveloped coral and sand beaches, my interest is not in the now chilly waters, but rather to the plants growing along its coastlines and interior mountain forests. In this video, I'll be focusing on one of its most celebrated inhabitants, the King Sago palm, Cycus revoluta. This plant is native only to these islands, a small strip of coastline in southern Kyushu, and perhaps a few islands off of China's Fujian province. In spite of its name, the Sago palm is not a palm at all, but rather a very ancient plant with ancestral forms dating back 300 million years or more. Like conifers, they're cone-bearing, though most people wouldn't recognize their cones as such. Male and female plants are separate, the males boasting an elongate cone, and the females a broad one with feather-like projections and brilliant orange fruits. Not what comes to mind when you think of a pine cone. My destination today is a massive colony of these plants on Amamiyoshima's northern coastline in Tatsugo town. The ride there takes me through low mountains, coastline forests and scrub. On the way I come across the small stand of mangrove trees, Candelia abobata, not far from the center of town. These trees grow in brackish water wetlands and are therefore saltwater tolerant. This one is full of fruit that have already sprouted and are growing into fully formed seedlings known as propagules. Once mature, these will drop off the parent and float away to a place where they can root in the mud or sand, thereby starting new colonies of trees. A bit further up the coast, I come across a large yuku pine, Pinus yucuensis, its lowest branch hosting a large colony of the epiphytic orchid, Luisia teres. In June, these plants boast small purple and green flowers, but now in early winter only have a few seed pods. Already here and there I find groups of the cycus growing. As I head north along the coast, they become more numerous, and my excitement builds. They seem equally happy on rocky slopes or on dunes near the seaside. Remarkably, I also find a tree fern species, Cyathea lepifera, growing a stone's throw from the salt spray of a nearby beach. At last I come out to the northernmost point on this peninsula of land, to a small town home to an authentic Catholic church, and just above it, sago palms covering the hillsides. Here there are cycads growing everywhere in the small valley just above this tiny seaside hamlet. And in truth, I'm not fully prepared for the sight I'm about to see. Their sheer number is staggering to behold in person. I later find out there are said to be some 60,000 trees on this one hillside alone. I am left nearly speechless at the spectacle. At the base of the hill of the main colony, I soon find out it is virtually impossible to penetrate this spiny forest. Nearly every part of this plant is rigid and spiky from the thick stems to the leaves and even cones. In times past, the starch and the stems and fruits of this plant were used as an emergency food during famine periods. Unfortunately, all parts of this plant contain the extremely poisonous glucoside, cycosin. In the past, many turned to this plant as a source of carbohydrate, but found themselves in what has been called cycad hell, so tetsujigoku, caught between starving to death or turning to this unlikely food source and thus suffering the same fate. Nowadays, cycad food products are refined properly, making them safe to consume, ironically at a time when they are no longer needed. Nearby, several large banyan trees, Ficus microcarpa, grow. 
with their odd buttressing aerial root systems, lending a tropical air to this place. While I regret having to leave behind these wonderful ancient trees, the day is getting on and I have to get back to my hotel by late afternoon to return the bicycle I borrowed. On the way back, I find a hedge with a golden tip form of the sago palm, Cycus revoluta variety aurea. I can't help but stop for a few pictures of them glittering in the fading sunlight. Back at the hotel, I'm grateful for a warm shower and a delicious dinner that night. Something tells me this won't be my last trip to this special place.